Hello, hello. First things first, hello everyone. Welcome to this off the cuff vidIQ live stream. I need to make sure that you can hear me first so I can see all these wonderful comments coming through. So do let me know if you can hear me in this vidIQ live stream and then we'll do some shout outs and some hellos to everybody here who's joined us on what is me for lunchtime. I'm sure it's uh, very different for all of you guys across the world who've joined us here. So uh, quickly introduce yourselves, tell me where you are in the world and we can get on with this live stream, which I hope you're going to find interesting. But first of all, let's uh, get to know each other. So uh, hello there to uh, MK Technical, um, HD Gamer. Uh, I can see you. Uh, Razzle Dazzle, New Zealand. Hello there. Is that New Zealand? Wow, what time will that be? That must be... Uh, like nine o'clock in the morning, Friday time, something along those lines. Uh, Amai Al Qaidi. I do apologize if I pronounce any names wrong. I'm terrible at this, but hello to uh, Egypt there. Uh, the official RDT Gaming. Hello. Yep. Yeah, thank you. You can hear me. Everybody's saying that they can hear me, which is absolutely brilliant. And as you can see, the uh, live chat is quite quick. So if I don't have a chance to say hello to everybody, I do apologize. But I can see Rob DeLuca there from Venice. Hello to you. Mountain Biking Tube, Switzerland. Hello there. Technical Aushtosh, India. It's 2 a.m. for you. Props to you for waking up at this time uh, to join in in this live stream. Uh, so, yes, hello, everyone. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name's Rob. Uh, as you can see uh, right up here, let me get my finger pointing correct. We've got, I'm right up here. And uh, I am the person behind all of the videos that you see on vidIQ, which are helping you to get more views in less time. And what we're going to do in a couple of minutes is um, I'm going to take you through um, some YouTube best practice tips and tricks for how to manage your comments. As, you, as your channel grows, you'll be getting all sorts of comments from everyone, just like we are right here having wonderful comments in the live chat. And it's something that you can manage and capitalize on to help grow your channel and build a community. That's exactly what we're trying to do here uh, in this live stream. And I've completely forgot to mention, of course, that I am uh, sporting a uh, Christmas hat here because we are uh, just, what, four days? I can't count. What day are we on? 21st, four days away from Christmas. So, uh, of course, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. And uh, while we're doing the presentation, uh, this screen is going to kind of disappear and I'm going to go to my web browser and that means I won't be able to see your chat but we're going to leave the live chat open for the end of the presentation so that we can uh, have some discussion about what you think on these tips and tricks. So we're going to jump into that in a uh, couple of minutes. Um, so uh, I'm just going to look at a couple more of your comments and try and answer as many as I can. Manit7, you're asking what happens to the giveaway. That's the iPhone giveaway. We did that six weeks ago. The winners have been announced and have been contacted. Uh, Northern Exotics, any relation to Mick Wilson Chester? Potentially somewhere in the bloodline, but I must admit I've not got a Mick Wilson in my immediate family there. Uh, Christmas starts in three days for you, official RDT Gaming, because uh, you are uh, Hispanic. So uh, whereabouts is that in the world that you live in? Nice to know that. And of course, people who live in New Zealand, you're only three days away. But I'm here in Vancouver, where it has been snowing recently. I would love to point the webcam outside and show you that. But uh, yeah, it's cold here at the moment. Ethan uh, Sharouf, I love my vidIQ Bruce subscription. We're more than welcome to help and serve you there. Fantastic to hear that you're using the vidIQ tools, which is brilliant. And they will feature in this presentation a little bit. And the best news is, as far as I can remember, all the features you're going to see here are absolutely free. So shall we get on with the presentation? I guess it's kind of a presentation, but it's kind of more of a me uh, riffing on some tips and tricks. And it'll probably last about 10 to 15 minutes, so it won't be too long. And I hope you'll find them really useful. So what we're going to be looking at today, and bear with me, if I sometimes go slower or pause for a second, it's because live streaming can be a bit chaotic. So I'm having to click on different buttons and screens to make sure that you can see the right things here. But what you should be seeing in a second is this screen here which is what we're going to go through today. It's YouTube uh, comments, tips and tricks. And there's five points that I'm going to look at in uh, general. 
Uh, and as I now go through this, I won't be able to see your live chat. So uh, you might want to hold off on the comments for a little while before we get to the end of the uh, live stream. We're looking at different aspects of comments and how they can help you. Five main points here. And some of them may sound obvious, but we're going to go into the discussion a little bit about why these comment, why these tips are important. So we're going to be looking at why you should read and reply to every comment if you can. Obviously, if you're a bigger channel, you may get uh, so many comments that you can't respond to all of them. So then you have to look at the high value comments. Which ones should you be answering first? And also, if you get comments regularly, how can you reply to them quickly? So you can just uh, motor through 20 or 30 comments uh, very quickly. We're also going to have a look at the non comment reply aspect in terms of engagement. We've got likes, loving a comment, and pinning a comment, where we're going to look at a, a very useful vidIQ tool there. And now we're also going to look at something which is relatively new here it's, it's the community tab. Now, some of you will have seen the community tab post from vidIQ. Some of you will have it yourselves. And we're going to look at the power as well as the perils of using the YouTube community tab. And to finish off, we're going to do a bit of comment housekeeping. There may be some things that you're not aware of, that um, there are comments that are very good, legitimate ones, but you don't see them because YouTube decides to put them in the wrong place. So that's what we're going to cover in the next 10 to 15 minutes uh, on this uh, live stream. If I just click the right button there, we should get back to me. So yeah, there we are, I'm back now and I um, can see all of your uh, comments. Uh, so before we uh, kick off and go onto a web browser where I'm gonna start showing you comments, uh, what? how do you value comments? Let's say you've made a YouTube video and you receive a comment on the video irrespective of whether it's a positive or a negative, or it's a really long response or a really short one, how does that make you feel as a video creator when you get a response? And I'll read some of them out in the live chat. What, what's your general feel? I mean, I've just seen some comments here and I'm trying to respond to them. So we've got some already. Ethan says, I use my hate comments to teach me to grow. So that's using uh, negative comments potentially as constructive criticism. Uh, which is all, an awesome attitude to have when you're not getting the um, the right comments that you would you want. Uh, what else have we got here? It gives me uh, more motivation to record. So Nick, great gamer, absolutely. When you get comments, that means you know somebody's watched your video, and it's at least pulled a res pulled an emotional heartstring of some kind. Whether it be anger, hate, love, you've done enough in your video to cause a viewer to actively become involved in the video. And that's that's brilliant stuff. Um, Northern Exotic says, first come, first serve. Haters are still views, still working to monetize monetization. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, some people are rod. <laughs> I'm not sure I can read that properly. I don't know if that's being spelled uh, properly. Uh, Pineapple287, I love replying to comments, the positive ones. Yes. Okay. So as a video creator, you probably get the idea that People responding to your videos is kind of a lifeblood and it, it's what it should be in terms of uh, building a community. That, that's, the one, that's one of the things about YouTube that's so brilliant is that it's an interactive experience. Obviously on live stream, it's like instant reaction. We're immediately talking back and forth, but on uh, YouTube comments, you put something out an hour or two later, you've got some responses. So let's have a look at what we get here on vidIQ on a regular basis. Let's uh, now switch to my general browser, which you should be able to see in one second. Let's transition that. And uh, now you should be able to see the browser. Okay. So just in case you don't know as a YouTuber, the best place to look at your comments is to go to the Creator Studio tab and click here on comments, because what that will do is load up all of your recent comments from your videos, and then you can look at the ones that are coming in right now. So the last one we got here was uh, from Review Celebrities two hours ago that says, so helpful video. Now, on average, when we post a video, uh, we'll get maybe about 50 to 100 comments per video, which is excellent for us. And um, I've, recently done a video where I tried to establish what the value of a comment is. Like when somebody watches your video, they're only giving you time. 
but when somebody comments on your video, they're giving you an emotional response, they're putting effort into a response, and there's also that hope that the video creator is going to respond to it, that, and they'll feel acknowledged just like you did when you produce the video. You, you feel fantastic when you get feedback, when you reply to comments, you get feedback. When you reply to comments, they're getting feedback as well. So I know it sounds obvious, but if you have the time after, say, an hour, maybe four hours the next day, make sure you just go through your comments and read as many as possible because you owe it to them. You've put out a video. You hope people watch it. They post a comment. They hope somebody reads it you owe it to your community to at least read the comments, as many as you can. And following on from that, logic dictates if you're going to read comments, you've probably got a bit of time to respond to comments. So uh, again, here, if we look generally at the vidIQ comments section here, you can see I go through the videos on a fairly regular basis and try and reply to as many as possible. It does become difficult when I put in a response and then somebody puts in another response, but it's already way down the YouTube comments list that so I just don't have a chance to look at it. And I'm sure you have the same problem as me. Uh, we've got one here which looks like spam, uh, which is brilliant. That means YouTube hasn't put it in the right place, but it's a comment. We might do something with that a little later. You do have the options here to uh, set it up as spam or delete it uh, like that if you wanted to. So there's, those are more tools for you. So yeah, the general consensus here is that you should be reading your comments and replying to as many as possible. Because there is a, a simple formula here. Let's say you get 10 comments on a video. If you read those comments and reply to all 10, what does that mean? You've doubled your engagement rate. You've now got 20 comments on a video because you responded to everyone who had the time to post a comment to your video. And that's good for the YouTube algorithm. Now, we're not going to say that just because you reply to every comment, it's going to turn your video viral. But when you're a video creator, you're looking for every single YouTube edge you can. And if you uh, respond to those comments, YouTube's going to like that. And also the viewer is going to feel more involved, more engaged in your content. And that could, them that could turn them into a subscriber if they're not already a subscriber, a subscriber. And it may turn them into what you might call a fan somebody who may in the future promote your content. They might share your links. They may even buy your merchandise, buy your products if you're selling them. So that's why we really encourage people to get involved in responding to your community on YouTube. Um, so those are the, the first two real tips that I would suggest uh, when it comes to uh, being a YouTuber. Now, let's just click that off. There we are. So now we're looking at what we've already looked at here, the read and reply to every comment. That's probably the most obvious answer, but there are a lot of benefits to it. And you'll feel fantastic when you start getting those comments. Now, as your channel grows, that may lead to some problems. Let's say you're getting 200 comments a day. So you're going to try and reply to 200 comments. That's going to be quite tricky. You're going to have probably some carpal tunnel syndrome from uh, all that typing and uh, repetitive strain uh, injuries as well and you're just not going to have the time so there needs to be a point where you possibly need to prioritize which are the uh, comments that you want to respond to so let's go back to our comments and let's see if we can prioritize these in some way so if we'll scroll back to the top here one of the really cool tools that we have here on uh, vidIQ, and it's free, is if a channel publicly displays their subscriber count, we list it here. So I can tell that this person uh, commented and they've got 4,500 subscribers, which is good. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that there's some with a one subscriber, uh, 67 subscribers. And to be honest, if you're strapped for time, you just simply might have the time to respond to these comments uh, with with the with the time that you have. So, which of the more important ones? We need to look at the channels which may have a larger influence, like this person here, Thinker Thunker, a brilliant channel name. 
Uh, I haven't had a chance to respond to this comment yet, but they've got 40,000 subscribers. So that's really one that I should be targeting. And they actually talk about how YouTube is a negative for their channel. So I'm pretty sure that after this live stream, I'm going to go away and look at that comment and put in a detailed response. So I might prioritize that comment right there. I seem to remember if I just scroll down a little further in our demonetized uh, video that we recently published, there was a channel here which posted. Here we are. Chad Wild Clay, he's got 2 million subscribers. So that's like, wow. There's a bit of exposure there for this video. Fantastic response. I'm definitely going to prioritize that channel as one that I'm going to respond to. So, yeah, it's if you're struggling for time, try and prioritize the high value comments. Now, obviously, you want to be looking at other comments which are which have got loads of detail in them and reply to them. So it, it's up to you which one you decide to rep reply to. But let's say a channel with 2 million subscribers responds to your video. It's almost like a, a way into a talking to them. And who knows, you may be able to set up a collaboration with them and that could have super exposure for your channel. Now we can streamline this even further if we need to. Uh, we have another tool here, absolutely free. It's a filter tool. If you click here and go to minimum number of subscribers, we can actually filter out channels with a lower subscription count than a filter. So let's now put in 10,000 subscribers. And you'll have to bear with me here because with all the live streaming going on, uh, things can get a little slow on the computer, but it's looking okay. So now that we've filtered out uh, the smaller channels, we've got Thinker Thunker again. That's very precarious, careful channel name that I've got to pronounce. We've got um, Epic Gaming here, JJ Survival, Green Pro, uh, Syrian Cooking Academy. All these channels have more than 10,000 subscribers. And you're thinking, right, these are the ones I could prioritize and putting responses to before I move on to the other chat, uh, commenters if I have time. So a brilliant tool here if you want to use it. Uh, minimum number of subscribers, you can set the le level and you're done. Okay, so let's um, take a, a quick break there here. Let's just go back to your comments. And I want to know how you feel these tips are going so far. Are you finding them useful? And I think I just realized I made a huge mistake there. Did I just not transition to a web browser so you didn't see any of that? <laughs> One of the perils of live streaming. Let's just see if we can uh, go back there, right? Okay, so did anybody actually see any of that? Because um, I just maybe made a bit of a, yes, I forgot to transition, Home of Magic. Thank you very much for that. So we're just going to go quickly through that again. Obviously, you get all the ideas of what I've done there. But let's just quickly uh, show you again the tool that I use there. Uh, right. So we should be able to get this back up and running. So very quickly, what I was saying here is the minimum number of subscribers. There's a tool here but from vidIQ. Uh, it's free and you can use the drop down. And then if I just go to 10,000 subscribers, that's going to quickly filter out all of these smaller channels so that we have just the, what you might consider high value comments that can, you can quickly put responses to. And yeah, that that should be the quick fix that you're looking for there. So apologies ever you didn't see it on screen as I was demonstrating it, but now you see it on screen. And uh, that's the tool there that we have from vidIQ. So I hope uh, that clarifies a little mistake I made there. And that's uh, one of the things with live streaming. and. To be honest, this is why I'm doing live streaming. I'm trying to practice and iron out all the um, errors and small niggles that you can make. Uh, and maybe one day I'll do a live stream uh, tutorial on how to live stream and not make mistakes like that. But I, I hope you found that useful. So yeah, what, what do you think so far of the comments that you said? Uh, Northern Exotics is learning a lot, but seems to be aimed at bigger channels. 150 subs, three month old channel. Okay, well, we're going to be looking at some um, stuff soon there, which, which can help you. I mean, obviously, even if you're a small channel, you will be getting a uh, some comments which you should be uh, working with. Uh, VidIQ, can you add template for comment videos? Uh, yes, that's what we're going to look at next. So it's good that you bring that up. Uh, Ethan says, even though I only get 1 to 10k views per video, that's brilliant. That's a lot of views per video, if that's what you're getting. 
all comments available. So take the time. Yep, absolutely. We do preach that. Um, do you have any tips for a channel with 400 subscribers? Um, okay, so if we're going to go on a little tangent, um, when in terms of comments, if you're wanting to try and encourage comments, pose questions in the video, and that usually brings back uh, some replies. If you try and make it quite implicit, maybe in the first minute, pose them a question, and uh, they'll probably be responding to that while they're watching the rest of the video. So, what else can we look at here? Let's see if I can get my uh, transitions right this time. Uh, we're now going to go back to our live stream card, and we've looked at uh, reading and replying to every comment, which is obvious, but you can see the value of it. Uh, when you do start to reply to comments. And we've looked at prioritizing high value comments. So when you have uh, channels with a lot of subscribers who've posted on your videos, make sure you look at, them for, look at them first if you don't have time to reply to all comments. Now let's look at quick replies. This is another vidIQ tool, which if you haven't used before, is awesome. And it's one of the tools I use every day. We'll just clear out the minimum subscribers now. So uh, let's transition now. Yep, we are now back on a browser, so I've not made that mistake this time. <clears throat> so we've looked, we've got a, a comment here, which is fairly simple, review celebrities. I wouldn't usually put in much of a response to this one because uh, I haven't got time when I'm going through all these comments. Um, but you kind of want to acknowledge that you've read the comment at least. And it's a nice gesture. They've watched the video. They've they put something in there. I want to respond to this uh, video, uh, this comment. So how do I do it very quickly uh, when I haven't got much time? I kind of want to do it with as minimal clicks as possible. So eventually when the browser loads up, we have this tool here, which is the comment template tags. If I click on it, that's going to show me a range of text that I've already set up where I can do a very quick response. So if we're gonna do a brand new one now, we'll quickly call it um, cheers. And then I'll say cheers for the comments. We, uh, let's see if I can spell it right. We appreciate it. And if you're hearing a lot of keyboard clicks, that's because I'm using a mechanical keyboard. So cheers for the comment, we appreciate it. Let's create that. And that will now sit at the bottom of our comment template tag, which is right here. So I can either click the plus button to instantly rep um, add it to the comment response, or I can click here to read it. I'm just checking that it's spelled correctly. Insert reply, reply, done. Now, obviously that demonstration took about two minutes, but if I was uh, quickly reading through comments, then I could scroll down and then I would say, what, 500 subscribers? Not really sure I can uh, respond to that one. Oh, here's an interesting one. Uh, now, somebody said sub back. And if you've watched our video on sub for sub, we don't recommend doing sub for sub because there's no value to it. So I uh, put in our typical uh, response to sub for sub. We've only got one answer for that. Watch this video and that will help you. Uh, let's see if we can help anyone else uh, with a quick response. There we are. Thanks for sharing, my friend. I've already got a couple of uh, thank you uh, responses. So this time we're going to use you're welcome. Uh, appreciate the support. And if you noticed, it put in the username automatically because when you create te uh, template tags, what you can do is, if it shows you here, if you use the username, if you type that in, then that will replace that bit of text with the channel name. So it's a really quick way of doing quick responses. So two ways to look at comments. Prioritize the high value ones by looking at the subscriber count, and you can use tag template tools to quickly insert a response. Sorry, not tag template tools, comment template tools to insert a quick response and boom, you're done. And I use this to maybe go through about 10 or 15 comments per video when they are fairly generic ones. So yeah, I hope that helps uh, with that. So how are you getting on folks? How, how, are, you, uh, how are you liking this uh, tutorial so far? I thought it was gonna go for 15, 20 minutes, but of course, no, it's going a lot longer as usual, but that's fine. And I'm, I'm more than happy to hang out with you guys. <clears throat> so yeah, 
it's brilliant um so what what do you think of the tools that we have there do you think they are useful like looking at subscription counts would that help you and if you've not used the comment template tags before how do you think that would use how, how do you think that would help you thanks very much ethan for the for the love and we're going to talk be talking about love in a sense in a, in a second actually thank you yeah I, I know you're finding it extremely useful i um tried your comment uh, templates in arabic in awesome so yep it supports all chat all languages so that's uh, really useful nick nick, uh, nick great gamer i appreciate it there as well uh, so thank you very much <clears throat> So definitely never even notice the template tool uh, templates. So there you are. That's one of the things that I love doing here is being able to show you brand new tools when you think, wow, I want that. And now you can use it, uh, Vespetta Gaming. Uh, there you go. Okay, let's move on to the next topic here. And as we go through this live stream, we are now going to look at like, love, and um, pinning comments. So. If you haven't got time to write a response to every comment, there are some quick options that YouTube does supply. And people's opinions may change on how you should treat um, each comment. Um, but here are the rules I generally follow here at vidIQ. But I would love to hear your opinions after I've uh, gone through this next, uh, next point. So let's ha have a look at the um, browser again. And yes, we do have it on screen. You are doing well here, Rob. Right, okay. So, we look at this first one here. Again, review celebrities. Uh, you have the like, dislike, and the love icon. Now, as a rule of thumb for me personally, this is, what, this is how I treat comments. I always like a comment. That's kind of my receipt in a subtle, non-invasive way that I've read the comments and I appreciated that you've done that. I never dislike comments. I leave that up to the community if they want to dislike it. If there's any profanity in it, usually that will go into the hell for review section anyway. And if somebody's got something negative to say, hey, that's okay. We're all uh, YouTubers and I can accept constructive crit criticism. Even even if it's not constructive crit criticism, I won't, I won't downvote it. I might just ignore it. And yeah, if it's highly abusive, then I will delete delete it. So I never use the um, dislike button. The heart button, this is where opinions might differ. I only use the heart button or the love button if I really think that the comment brought some significant value to the video. Uh, to the video. So if we scroll down here, um, this one, videos are so clear and fun. Uh, great job. Now I hope these tips are going to pay off. And I really appreciate that as a video creator. I think that's a very nice comment. And I'm going to love that one. Yes. This one here, good video. Yeah, okay. It, it's a quick response. There isn't, there doesn't feel as if there's that much heart in the comment. But again, I've liked it because I appreciate the comment. But am I going to like it? No. And some people will just like every single comment. The reason I don't do that is because if a YouTuber has their setup correctly, when you love a comment, it sends a notification to them. So if they comment on every video and you keep loving the comments and it keeps sending their notifications, it's going to lose value. I don't think they're going to treat it with as much, I guess, honor's not the right word, but they're not going to find it such a nice gesture when they receive the 50th love from the 50th comment they've posted on one of your videos. So I tend to use my hearts a little more sparingly. Um, and we'll see if we can find, I mean, this one here, this may definitely be worth a heart because of the time it's taken for this YouTuber. Again, let's pronounce this right. Thinker, Thunker. This YouTuber has gone to some effort to write this post. And although it's talking about not using YouTube anymore, I appreciate it, so I'm going to give that one a love and a like. And again, I'm going to probably do a more measured response uh, later on. Now, I'm just going to find one uh, further down, which was a, a brilliant example of one where it was one that I definitely wanted to give it a heart. And let's just see if we can find it. It's this one here, Frank Foti. Now, 
You can see here the value of this comment. This person has gone to the uh, YouTube guide guidelines and help, and they've uh, almost rewritten what YouTube says in their own words to help me and other YouTubers. We can already see here that seven of six people and myself have liked this comment, but this definitely deserves more. This definitely de deserves a heart. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to love this comment and we really do appreciate it. So it's over to you now a little bit before we just move on to pin comments. What do you think? Do you like all of your comments? Do you love all of your comments? When you don't have time to respond to a comment, what's your attitude to, um, to comments? How does it work? Let me know what you think. Love to hear your thoughts on how you treat comments in terms of loving them or liking them. Syrian Cooking Academy, you, you do all of them. Is that Do you like all of them or do you um, love all of them? Uh, HTOP Skills, you like all positive comments. So I guess if it's a neutral comment, do you just leave it alone or do you... Uh, do you give it a thumbs down if you don't like the comments? Uh, Vespetta Gaming says, Sometimes I got hate comments when I'm offended. My opinion on the NFL kneeling stuff. But most of them are positive. Okay, so that's one where there's really divided opinions. Um, and yeah, obviously, opinion pieces and politics and anything where we're discussing a news topic, that can certainly bring very divisive and opposing opinions. Uh, Pineapple287 says, I usually give him a quick response. I usually give hearts to positive comments and ones with good opinions. I don't usually like them though. Okay, so you don't give him a thumbs up. You just give him a like. That's an interesting approach. No, certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, and uh, Ain MS, when I don't have time to respond in specific, I'll at least give it a like if a comment is original. Good, yeah. So original comments, again, we're thinking about when the viewer has put time into putting in a response. I like negative comments if they contribute to my community or my content in some fashion. There you are. So uh, a really good attitude there uh, from Ain MS who's saying that if it's a negative comment, that's okay. It c contributes to the community. And I, I, I completely agree with all that. So some excellent responses here. And I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to answer my questions there. Now, we've done likes and loves. What about pinned comments? It's a fairly new phenomenon, is ping comments. We'll go back to the uh, screen now. Um, now, let's say I love this comment so much here from Frank Foti that I want to pin it to my video. Previously, what you would have to do, and I don't want to do it on screen because it will probably kill my laptop, but you would have to click on the comment, which would then take you to the video, and then you'd have to press three dots and then click pin and confirm. And that's what, a 10, 15, a 10, 15 second process, which is something that you don't want to do. Well, YouTube recently brought out a tool. Uh, sorry, not YouTube. <laughs> YouTube didn't bring out this. We brought out this tool, vidIQ. We brought a tool out a tool which reduces the time taken by a factor of about 80%. You want to pin a comment. We've got the pin icon here. Click it. A pop-up will come up saying, do you want to pin this comment? And if I did want to pin this comment, I would say yes. And that would automatically pin this comment to that video. And it would be the same for any video on the um, on the comment manager page. If we go back to this one, let's see if we can find one which isn't from the same video. We had a lot of comments on the demonetization video, if you haven't seen that yet. VidIQ was kind of demonetized for a video recently, and it uh, brought up some interesting investigations and case studies. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure to check it out. Yeah, there's a lot of comments on uh, that particular topic. So here we go, uh, Megazonian. Uh, he's talking about never even knowing what YouTube spaces were, and that's something we talked to YouTuber CZ's world about. Again, I could simply click on that pinned comment and that would automatically pin it to the YouTube Spaces video. So it's a much quicker way of quickly pinning your comments to a video. And why would you want to pin a comment to a video? Because it adds 
an extraordinary amount of value to a video. Now, usually I would absolutely pin this video, but pin this comment to the video. Unfortunately for our demonetization one, I needed to pin my own comment to explain to the viewers what happened when I uploaded the video. But this is like a prime candidate uh, for pinning a comment. It adds so much to the video, adds so much extra information. And what this will do is it will put the comments at the very top of the uh, comments on the video. So most people will see it if they look at the comments. An alternative way to look at pinned comments is, as I've just said, you can pin your own comments to a video. And the reason you might do that is if you want to add extra information beyond the description box. Because if you look at a video on a mobile device, the description is, um, what's the word? You need to expand the description box in order to see it which most people don't do, but if you scroll down to the comments, they're, they're always expanded, I guess, and never minimized. So you can see the pinned comment as the very first one. And if you wanted to use it as your own description in a video, then absolutely you could do that. Uh, maybe if you want to add timestamps or something. So that's an alternative way at looking at pinned comments if you wanted to do it that way. So what have we looked at so far in this live stream? We've looked at quite a lot of things, actually. Uh, we've looked at why comments are important and how you should read and reply to every single one. We've looked at how you should look at high value comments by looking at the subscriber count and the vidIQ quick comment templates to quickly reply, reply to them. And now we've gone through likes, loves, and pinning of comments. For me, as I will repeat, I like all comments as a receipt that I read it. I love comments that I think have added some value or are important to the whole broader discussion. And pinning comments, those are saved for ones which add so much incredible value to a video that you think it's the best comment by a mile. Or you can pin your own comments to add further information. And vidIQ's pinning tool allows you to do that very quickly. Uh, so just before we move on to the next topic, uh, what do you think about uh, pinning comments? Have you ever pinned a comment? Maybe tell us why you um, you pinned a com comment. What would be a reason for you pinning a comment? Think of the last time you got such a wonderful comment that you pinned it. Or have you ever used pinned comments before? Is that something that you're going to use in the future? Uh, HD Gamer says, I pin the good points that were very useful. Absolutely. Do you have any examples? A quick examples you might be able to share with us. How many pin in total? So, okay. So I think Syrian Cooking is asking how many pins can you apply to a video? You can only pin one comment to one video. So when you pin a comment, that goes to the top of the video's comments. And then if you pin another comment, then that pin comment replaces the existing one. So it's one pin per video. Uh, so pineapple two eight seven. Sometimes I need to pin a comment too. I've made a video called "Destroying Windows 3.1." Well, that's going back into um, what pre nineteen nineties. That was the first Windows op Windows operating system I had uh, when I first got a PC. Uh, but hover the mouse over lag it and delay, so I had to explain it. Okay, so you uploaded a video which had a problem, and then you had to explain the issue. You use your you you personally use the pin comment, which is a, a good way to uh, use them. Uh, so yeah, some some good uh, responses there. Uh, we'll look at one more. Uh, Aimed, and again, sorry if I pronounce anyone's names wrong. Ain MS, I pin comments to multiple videos across multiple channels, and I choose to pin comments that add to the content or the comment section itself, highlighting it. Absolutely. And if I was going to pin maybe a uh, comment to this live chat, that would be a candidate. So uh, yeah. Again, excellent responses from all of you. Thank you uh, very much. I am seeing that there's some questions that are coming in, like Ethan, you're asking about how to turn off two-factor authentication on vidIQ. That's, this isn't really the place where I can answer such questions like that, uh, but we do have a dedicated support team. So if you go to support at vidIQ.com, I think that's the email, uh, they'll be able to answer all of your questions uh, if you do have anything in particular about vidIQ. And I'm sure in the future, I might do uh, open sessions where... We can just talk about vidIQ in general. Um, but yeah, that, if you're needing help, uh, then we've got a dedicated support team and they'll get back to you very quickly. 
Uh, one more thing here, uh, Pineapple287, there was one comment that I pinned because of someone talking about Windows operating system kernels, and I thought that was the same throughout, so I pinned it. So yeah, somebody, a, a relatable comment. Um, there, there you go. So uh, let's now, uh, somebody saying, do you see yourself ever asking for less than 49 a month on vidIQ? We do discounts uh, on a regular basis, uh, so make sure to keep them out where you may be able to get a discount price on vidIQ. Right, we're going to look at the next part now, and this is probably going to be a bit of a biggie as well. Uh, this is going to be all about the power and the perils of the community tab. So first of all, uh, a quick poll here. So just let's say yes or no. Do you have the community tab and have you used it? That's the first question. Uh, we'll quickly see if anybody has used the community tab. This is a relatively new tool that came out a month ago. Uh, well, it's been around for about a year, but it's been widely available to YouTubers recently. JJR Survival, hello to you. Um, I've seen you commenting recently on our video, so thank you very much. You do have it. Uh, BC Truck doesn't. Um, so it's kind of like a mix. Some do. Uh, a lot of people wishing they do have it. You don't have enough subscribers. Yeah, it, I think it's another one of those things with YouTube where they want to progressively roll out the community tab, the same with when you want to start using thumbnails or publishing videos longer than 15 minutes. It's kind of, I guess, a reward. And if you look at it from one cent, one point of view, if you have less than 10,000 subscribers, then maybe you don't have the reach, which is what the community tab should be used for. Uh, but we're getting a mix here. I, I would say it's more like 70% um, don't have it, 30% do have it. Well, let me quickly show you what it looks like on the uh, web browser. I'm not really going to be able to show you what it looks like on a mobile device because that's where most of the content from the community tab goes. Um, but it is really quite an interesting, powerful tool. Right, well, transition there now it looks as if my browser's caught up so let's have a look at the community tab this is what it looks like on a desktop and nobody will ever see it on a desktop because it's within a link on a channel and hardly everyone goes there but when you it's probably the best way to post stuff you can post it from a mobile device but it's always just a little quicker when you've got a fast keyboard you can type in a general status update such as I am fine but I don't think anybody would be interested in seeing that. You can post existing videos, so kind of re-promote them. Uh, as you can see there, add an existing video to YouTube and select one uh, from the pop-up, which is very slow because my computer is uh, really struggling here, but oh well. Uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have clicked that because we have just got a brand new Windows screen called the white screen of death. Your YouTube videos, yeah. Okay, so you, I could select one of these, like I could select the live stream that's going on right now and promote it to my uh, audience, but I'm not going to do that now because, again, my computer is really struggling. Um, one of the other types of posts you can do is polls, uh, like I did a recent one. If you use a video intro clip, how long is it? And we went through the different lengths of seconds. Most people, four to eight seconds, which is about right. If you're over eight seconds, your introduction is far too long on your video, by the way. And 4% said 15 seconds. It's like, wow, you have a 15 second video introduction. I'm sure most people have switched off by them. So it's interesting to get feedback from the community. And where do all these posts go? Well, if you have a mobile device and the majority of people are using uh, mobile devices now, are on YouTube, these come up in your subscription timelines. Uh, let's see if I can quickly show you. I'm just going to go to my uh, my mobile device now, and I'll see if I can show you what happens. This is a very much off the cuff, will it work type of thing. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to go back to me. Well, I, look, I, I was trying to show you this, but as you can see, my um, screen has crashed on my uh, iPhone. 
which I think is an indication that all the bandwidth is being taken up by uh, uh, this live stream. So I'm just going to try it one more time. But essentially, when you go to your subscription list on YouTube, that's where all of these posts appear. Now, I know I'm. some of you are probably thinking, what, so YouTube is being turned into Facebook or Twitter? And the answer is a little bit yes. So here, here's the post that you saw on the desktop. And now that's the post here on the mobile device. If I continue to scroll, let's see if we can find one more. Uh, Beam here. It's another channel. They've just posted a question, I think. They're talking about uh, the... Uh, they're I think they're reading out the entirety of the new US tax bill online. So they've just posted a comment there. Um, sorry, again, if it's not, uh, it's not focusing too much on there. Um, but that is basically how it works. So... Is that a good thing, first of all? Tell me, what do you think about the YouTube Community tab? I'm sure you've experienced it now. Whether or not you have it, you've probably come into contact with it. What do you think of the YouTube uh, Community tab? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Have you switched it off? Love to hear your thoughts on that. I can see some comments here about um, fake subscriptions. Uh, never buy fake subscri subscriptions. It's, they're absolutely worthless. Here we go. JGR Survival. I have a community tab. I like it, but I'm not sure if any subscribers like it. They don't really respond to them much. Okay, so um, JJ Survival, tell me quickly, how many subscribers do you have? And um, When you do a post, how many likes or responses do you get? That would be interesting to work out kind of a ratio of engagement you're getting there. Because that's an interesting response. That's not really what we've experienced. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, brick built replicas. I like how it. I like how it allows channels that can post frequently to leave some form of update. Excellent. I are you the channel who um, posted on our community tab about pitching your channel and you said you build video game weapons out of Lego. I thought that was an absolute fascinating channel. I think you've got real potential there. Uh, so keep up with that. Very unique channel, if it is you, by the way. Uh, Ethan says, I like my community tab, but people, uh, I think, don't ever look at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, hi, Brit Bill. Yeah, I, I I, was really, really interested. I think I saw your video on the, a, is it a Garand sniper rifle. I'm going off topic here, but yeah, I just thought it was fascinating. Uh, one, one here from Scotch for Dummies. Uh, I think the community tab is great. It's a nice way to notify your subs without having to post a video to create alerts. It's still early for the general audience, but starting to get more responses. Yep, good. Okay, I'm just okay. JJR did respond. Fourteen thousand subscribers with four responses. Now that does surprise me. I would expect um, a bit higher than that. Probably about ten responses. So maybe you're not really asking the right questions, or maybe it's just something that didn't resonate with your audience. It's a great segue to go back to our uh, responses and just show you in general how we perform. Um, so obviously we have 100,000 subscribers, which does help. Uh, but I have a second channel where I have about 90,000 subscribers and I get the same feedback. Um, so like we're getting 640 votes here. Uh, if we go to the video, uh, the question where I ask people to pitch their channels, so again, there's us as a, uh, a channel that helps YouTubers. Um, making sure you know what your message is is really important. And you guys did that. I mean, 45 responses. That blows out of the water some of the videos that we do. We've got more responses and likes on this comment than we do some videos. And we had all sorts of fantastic responses. And I read through them all and posted some of them uh, as a follow-up conversation saying, these were brilliant ways of pitching your uh, channel. And I would love to bring up BrickBuilt's example if uh, my computer has the processing power to do it. And so yeah, you can see again, uh, the, the community tab does work very similar to YouTube comments. You can like a comment, you can love it, but you can't pin it. That's the one thing I don't think you can do at the moment. Let me just check. Uh, no, you can't pin a comment to the top of the community post, so to speak. There is a brick built re replica. So it's trying to get gamers to watch because I create massive, this was the bit that I loved. You can probably remove the first part. I create massive Lego models of gaming weapons. 
Now, if you're into video gaming and you're into Lego, that's it. You're just going to go have a look. And and yeah, <laughs> it's such an interesting idea. And uh, I think... You... Sorry. Again, I forgot to do the transition, so let's do the transition there. So yeah, Brit Built replies here has um, got his response, his pitch here uh, from this post that I did where I wanted people to uh, give us their pictures on their channels. So here we go, uh, 45 comments, 45 likes, sorry, and I think there was more than 50 comments, and there we are. So you you posted here, I replied, I guess you liked that reply now you're here in the live stream it's brilliant really really good stuff so that's the power of the community tab but what about the perils well let's take a look at this i'm sure this person's not going to mind me a post um showing this on a live stream because it is a public post and uh, hopefully we can find it uh we've been posting in general once a day on the community tab I think, this is, my, again, my personal opinion, if you post any more than once a day, you run the risk of saturating somebody's uh, subscription box. So here we are. We've been posting once a day on the YouTube community feature so far. What are your thoughts? We've got 400 votes on this one. And it looks as if we're more or less getting it right. 60% uh, said the right amount. Another 8% said they want even more. So 68% are saying that we are posting the right amount. And 33% said... No, it's too much. So two to one ratio in my book, I'm saying, okay, we're doing okay. We're not going to post any more, but we're not going to post any less. But it did get some negativity. And if I can find this one, here we are. Uh, this guy called Greg, I hate it. You're posting too much. Another useless multiple choice question. If you don't know what your target audience wants from the video, uh, that's pretty poor. Well, I just did a poll that gave me exactly the answers I wanted, which tells me that we are posting the right amount of community posts. So there we are. That That's the perils of it. You may get some negativity. People may even unsubscribe from your channel because you're posting too many community posts. But that's just one of the things you've got to work with you with YouTube. Would I rather not post anything to my community and keep that one subscriber or post to all of the community get them more engaged with all these wonderful comments, all these votes, people visiting new videos. And the sacrifice is this one, there could be more, but this definitely this one person who's most likely subscribed. So who's most likely unsubscribed. So I hope that's a uh, good reflection, a real insight into how the community tab works. And again, I hope that if you haven't got it, that in the future, you will get it and, as you might say, use it responsibly. Uh, so before we move on, do you have any more general thoughts about your the community tab if you use it? And if you, um, if you use it, how have you found it? And what do you think of our approach and attitude? Ethan, again, person here that he posts once a week, but I have from time to time post twice a week. I'm scared that I won't get the maximum views because I'll be posting too much. Should I post, post twice a week? That's one of these unknown YouTube things. Obviously, when I was going through my feed there, there was probably a lot more um, posts in the feed that just weren't appearing on YouTube. And when it first went live, uh, the my subscription feed got flooded with posts. So I'm sure there's some machine learning going on there from YouTube, which decides which uh, posts that you see. Because another thing that it does is sometimes it gives you a notification that somebody's done a community post. So yeah, there's, there's two different ways of looking at it. Um, but I would say if you're posting once a week, maybe experiment posting twice a week. I, I guess the response to that is maybe just keep up in the level until somebody complains. And then it's like, ah, now I've hit my quota. Or do what I did and do a, a poll and say, how are you liking these community posts? Do they work for you? So uh, Pineapple says, I post almost daily or live stream and uh, I gain subs quite rapidly or, or very slowly. So uh, yeah, not too many uh, opinions there coming out on the community tab, but other, other views, I guess. And I'm reading all these comments and I'm certainly learning a lot. I think there's going to be um, 
videos in the future where I'm not doing a presentation and I'm sort of just looking at the comments and trying to reply to as many as I can. And I think that's probably a good, good way to go forward. But yeah, I mean, all these comments are fantastic and, uh, and I'm loving that you're getting involved in this conversation. And you'll be pleased to hear if you're not too interested in the comments, uh, in the um, comments tips, that we're on the, uh, the last section now, which is comment housekeeping. So you get comments, they're fantastic. Do you actually see them all? Well, maybe you don't. Maybe they don't all go in the right place. YouTube is usually very good at filtering out the erroneous comments, the ones that you don't want to see, but occasionally they do get it wrong. So that's where we're going to go right now. We'll just have to wait a few minutes for my computer to go from one tab to the other. So, oh, look at this. Ethan is posted on one of my uh, videos while he's been watching this live stream. That's like incredible multitasking. And uh, yeah, I'm going to like that one and I'm going to love it. <laughs> you get special privileges because you are watching the live stream. So I do appreciate that. You see, folks, if you do get involved in the community, then uh, you get lots of perks and benefits. So this comment here, S, well, is that, what does that mean? That, that sh probably shouldn't be in my published comments. Uh, it's probably spam. But again, I'm not too fussed about it. It's not too, it's not actually a spammy comment. So I'm just going to leave it alone that time because it might affect their comments in the future. Uh, 500, 500 subscribers. Not really quite sure though why that one is. Help me reach 250 plus if done type YouTube girl. So again, that's a very spammy one. So you can see that YouTube doesn't always get it right with the comments that it does allow on your videos. Again, I'm not going to uh, spam, uh, put that as spam. If I saw that coming up a lot of times, I might do that. But for now, I can accept it. However, we've got this tab up here. Help for review. I'm not going to go there because that's probably got some profanities in it and we don't want them on the live stream. And I'm glad that they're there. And you can set up in your community settings, uh, any foul and abusive language that automatically puts in hell for review. So if you've not used that before, absolutely go there. I'm going to go in likely spam though, and we're going to see if there's any comments here that shouldn't be there. And it's also going to be good insight uh, for you to see what kind of um, comments are just a waste of time. Like here we go, sub for sub, YouTube's automatically identified that as spam and stuck it in the spam folder. So I don't have to worry about that. Another one here, please pin my comment. Uh, that's a little too spammy. YouTube doesn't like that. Gone in the spam folder. One like uh, equals nine views and good for you. That's going in the spam folder. And you can see that a lot of these are revolving around sub for sub. Can you sub subscribe to my channel? I subbed your turn. And yeah, YouTube does good do a good job generally of getting them out of the general YouTube comments, but occasionally it gets it wrong. Like uh, the Tevin show, uh, I know that he comments on uh, various videos on our channel. He's always uh, criticizing my green screen. Fair enough, I appreciate the criticism. I'm always trying to fix that. Uh, but he says, thanks for the info. 75,000 subscriber channel. Why is that gone into the spam folder? No idea, I need to approve that comment. So. From time to time, if you do get a lot of comments, just make sure to go into the, uh, what you would call spam folder and make sure that there's comments there that shouldn't be. Like this one here, it's, uh, this person said that subscribe to my channel and found your tips very informative and helpful. I've done most of the stuff, I've uh, seen no growth. Okay, so maybe I need to help him out with this. But why has that gone in the spam folder? This person clearly has spent time writing that comment. Uh, it's, it's one that's had a lot of effort put into it. I should be approving that comment, liking it, loving it maybe, and responding to it. So yeah, general tip there, make sure that you go through your all the comments, your spam folder, and make sure that you are not missing any valuable comments that could really contribute to your um, community. And with that, we come to the end of the presentation section. Just to recap, uh, read and reply to every comment. That sounds obvious, but you can see the value of it. And hopefully in this 
live stream, you're seeing the value of how I'm reading and replying to comments. Again, it's more of an instant experience, but uh, really good stuff. Prioritizing high value ones. So if you haven't got time to respond to all comments, try and find the ones with the most subscribers, which are YouTube, YouTube which our vidIQ uh, subscriber count tool can do. And uh, make sure you get in uh, quick replies using the comment template tool as well. We've got these other forms of engagements like love and pin. I like every comment. I love the ones that I feel make a big difference to the channel and I pin the ones which are fantastic and add so much to the videos. We've looked at the community tabs. Some of you have it, some of you haven't, and you're uh, hopefully getting to get the hang of it and looking forward to using it in the future. And finally, if you do have any uh, spam comments, you can filter them out. You can set up uh, defaults for putting profanities into the health review section, but also in the spam tab, you might want to just check that every once in a while to make sure that you're not missing any valuable comments. Phew! Uh, that brings to a conclusion this presentation, which when I practiced this yesterday, if you can believe this, I practiced this in front of this camera with no feedback. It took about 10 to 15 minutes. This time, we're one hour into the live stream and I've just finished. So something for me to learn there that I need to... So this is like an on-screen uh, review of myself. I need to make sure that I um, go a little quicker and cover things in a bit quicker topic, uh, quicker fashion, and uh, make sure I um, ask you the questions beforehand before I transition back and look at the comments. So uh, there we are. Ethan is uh, loving this presentation, and I'm sure you're loving this presentation because you featured so highly in it. Uh, but I, again, I do uh, appreciate uh, the comments and HD Gamer is saying, or oh, it's done by. Well, I didn't necessarily mean that was the end of a live stream. I just said that was the, that was the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Planet. Uh, well, right. I'm going to try and pronounce your channel name. Planeta Aspergia and Nukai TV. Tell me how close I was to pronouncing your channel right. There you go. Tech Thapper, you are welcome. Um, and a Vespetta Gaming, don't worry too much about time. And I think, yeah, that, that's a general opinion of live streaming, isn't it? You just, things can go off off the rails, off topic. And in a live stream, that's absolutely fine. Because would you believe it, this live stream will probably take less time wholesale to edit and produce because I don't have to do any of that. It takes less time than a three-minute video that I would edit which is an interesting concept. If, I'm sure if you've live streamed and done videos, you're aware of that as well. Uh, Brick Built's Replicas, he's going to the comments section. Um, yep, yeah. <laughs> see see how you get on there. I'm sure you've got lots of comments about uh, fans uh, asking you to make uh, different weapons. Here's one I would like you to make, if you can make the Halo like default machine gun out of Lego. If you haven't already done that, please do that. I'd be interested. Uh, Tech Thapper, you're asking when the next live stream is. Okay, this was kind of an experiment to make sure that I had all the live streaming stuff up and running. And I think it's gone very well in terms of general production. I don't think there's been any drop off of frames, which is good. And um, a few uh, small errors with the transitions, but that's something I'll learn. Uh, so this was kind of a test, but in the new year, there's going to be a lot more live streaming. I think I've got a fairly good idea of uh, some of the different live streaming I want to do, like... Now we're just riffing, we're just chatting, and that's certainly something I'm going to do in the future, where I'll just come live, chat to you guys about YouTube, and yeah, see how it goes. Okay, uh, now, one of our, um, one of the people who's commented here is um, somebody who works tirelessly at vidIQ, and he's probably going to get really embarrassed now, but um, Umit is our, one of our support guys. Uh, I refer to him as the chief support guy and um, he has got so much surgery knowledge and he works tirelessly to help your problem. So somebody was asking earlier on about um, two-factor authentication issues. Uh, if you go through the support, it's going to probably land on Umit's desk at some point and he'll frantically scurry away to um, try and resolve it. Like um, to, uh, whenever I come online, he's always online. So I just want to give a big shout out there to Umit who does some fantastic work at vidIQ, helping uh, you guys uh, with any of your problems. Uh, HD Gamer is asking, uh, can we have one tomorrow? Uh, unfortunately, not tomorrow, because uh, I'm going to be traveling very soon. Um, but in the new year, 
let's see, maybe a weekly, bi-weekly basis. We're going to have a, a lot more... Um, a lot more live streaming. Uh, Big D Beast Gaming. Hope you will do more live streams in the future. Big D Beast Gaming. I replied to you in a previous comment. Uh, I think you may need, want to check that comment because I've been trying to get in touch with you. Uh, if we miss out here, just maybe reply to this video or do a new comment because I need to get in touch with you about something. So yeah, bit of a, a bit of secret information there. But yeah, I have been trying to get hold of you and I don't think you responded to my comment. Um... HD Gamer is now begging for one. So I've got hard... See, this is how you turn uh, viewers into commenters, into subscribers, into hardcore fans. HD Gamer is now begging for more of this, uh, which is uh, brilliant to hear. Uh, yeah, and Tech Thapper is now saying he's... Uh, give him a break, he's done an hour of talking. Yes, I have. And I've completely forgot to have a drink from my um, Harry Potter goblet of orange, which I was going to do. Just when you do live streaming, you just get so focused on the job at hand, so yeah. Oh, that's better. And it's actually coming up to lunchtime. Well, it's well past lunchtime. I'm not sure what time it is in uh, your part of the world, but it's uh, 1.36 in the afternoon, and I am thinking of going and having a cheeky pizza, uh, but I'll have to see on that one. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang around maybe for another five, ten minutes. So if you've got any general questions, that we'll do maybe a bit of practice of what we might do in a general vidIQ chat. So if you have got any questions, fire them in. Ethan Sharif, it's 2.36 in Colorado. Does that mean it's cold and snowy? Tech Thapper, London, 9.36. If you haven't already noticed, I am from the UK. I am originally from uh, Yorkshire. Le well, I was going to say Leeds, but I'm from Huddersfield now. You might have heard of Huddersfield since we got promoted to the Premier League. Yes. And so that's where I am originally from, from but I'm now in Vancouver. Oh, it's snowing. For you, Ethan, brilliant. It was snowing. We got our first snow of the uh, year in um, Vancouver on Tuesday. And now I'm going to go completely off script and I'm going to try and see if I can show you uh, what it looks like outside. Let's see if this is going to work. So I can't see my screen here now. So there we are. I'm not sure if you can uh, see this, but that's what it looks like outside of my uh, office window there. Uh, we do have a bit of snow, but it was terrible, and it's got very icy very quickly. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, hopefully, that's not, not going to cause any travel problems there. HD Gamer, Northampton. I've been to Northampton once, about 20 years ago. Never been a game. Read, in, read into that what you will. And uh, brick-built replicas, yeah, that, from, from one extreme to the other. You're still having, uh, I guess, forest fires. I was actually down in L.A., in October uh, for Vid Summit, and um, LA is a nice place. I managed to get from the airport to the hotel a mile down the street, and then to go go karting somewhere 50 miles away, and that was it. I went from the airport to the hotel to go karting. I won the go karting, uh, you know, just because I'm really good at go karting. I'm not really, but I did win. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's my one experience of. Uh, LA, and I'm hoping to go back for leisure sometime. Uh, Syrian cooking, uh, so you're asking where is Vancouver? It is in Canada. Uh, you won't believe this looking outside, but it's like one of the, it's the warmest city in Vancouver because it's west of the mountains. So everything east of the mountains, you're talking Calgary, Winnipeg, Toronto, it all gets frozen over. Uh, it's like a, a frozen tundra from now until the beginning of April, but Vancouver has its own sort of microclimate where it stays relatively warm, like it's usually above, above freezing, um, but just not very recently. So who's my favourite British YouTuber? Um, I, I haven't really, I wouldn't say I've got a favourite British YouTuber from uh, who I can think of off the top of my head. Good question. You've really caught me off guard there. I can't think of one in particular. I guess because I'm a tech enthusiast, Super Saf TV, if you've heard of him, he does a lot of tech stuff. And that's where my, my original YouTube background is. So, yeah, uh, Calgary, it was probably, probably very frozen. Wisconsin is close enough to Canada. I'm basically half Canadian at this point. Do you want to move to Canada? 
after recent events. We're not going to get political here at vidIQ, but it's interesting things going on there in the US at the moment. HD Gamer is saying pick me, but I'm not sure what I'm picking you for. We, we're not picking any uh, winners today. Uh, Sabi BGTV, have you ever been fishing? No, I have never been fishing, I must admit. I, my attention span would just not be able to hack it. I would sit there uh, with the rod in hand for maybe three minutes. And soon after that, I'll tell you what I would do. This is what I would do with uh, the fishing rod. In one hand, I would be holding the fishing rod, and then the other, I would probably be uh, just checking my Clash Royale and making sure that all my chests are in order and things. And yeah, I I, I, I would just be too distracted. So um, <laughs> I haven't got time for for such leisurely pursuits you might describe them as. Yeah, but I and I would agree, uh, Tech Fapper, Marcus Brownlee, MKBHD is probably the pinnacle of tech uh, video YouTubers. Um, and the stuff he puts together is astonishing. Uh, so, Sag, Sabi, you're asking, uh, you have 23,000 sub subs in eight, with 18 videos in six months. So that's brilliant growth. Well done, you, sir. How can vidIQ help me? Uh, I'm I assume you're saying help me there. Uh, it's difficult to answer in one short sentence, but uh, we have tools that allow you to uh, search trending topics. We have tools that can help you look at your SEO, make sure you're using the right tag so you can sort them out, make your videos more discoverable. We've got a keyword research tool so you can search which um, keywords have been used more than others. Like there might be a subtle difference between customer experience and customer uh, feedback or customer life cycle. Like such a small change in the word can have a big difference on search. Um, our tool will tell you those uh, subtle differences. And there's just all sorts of other things that will help you automate the way you use YouTube. Like, I don't know if you were here at the beginning of this uh, live stream, but we've been looking at three tools, I think. Yeah, three tools that help you on uh, managing comments. Those are checking which subscribers have a lot of subscribers so you can respond to them first. Uh, comment template tag so you can create some stock responses and then just stick them in there quickly and the automatic pin tool so you don't have to jump to a video to pin it you can do it from the um, video manager comment uh, page so that's a very brief uh, look and all and those three tools are free uh, but we do have some paid services as well so i would say check out the videos that i've already done on the channel like we've got one where it shows you everything pretty much what vidIQ does a hundred videos a uh, hundred tools and we've got a playlist which shows you what, what all, all our, a lot of our tools do so maybe check in the description there's probably links there and i'll tell you how to help them uh okay yeah brick built replicas seo is such a cool tool for anyone who doesn't use it yeah i mean if you if you don't know what seo is uh, it's one of the basics of youtube if you want to if you want to get your content discovered uh it's really important to use the right keywords in your video title like front load your video title with keywords make sure you repeat those keywords in your descriptions and then include some of those tags and then longer tail keywords in your video tag it all just says little things like if you're a small channel and you're you need that little edge then seo is definitely where you can find it now there's there's, there's more people joining here like steve w and tom tech both saying hello um, and Brick Movie saying the green screen is pretty good today. Thank you. Uh, I'm using OBS today, and for some reason the chroma key works a lot better. It just works instantly, um, which is fantastic. And I wish Camtasia would do the same thing. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks. I can I can ruin it by turning off this light. So now, oh, did you just did you notice for a brief second that the camera there that there was a little. You can still see a little bit, just the green screen not working there. But yeah, uh, thanks thanks for noticing. I, I do appreciate it. I'm always working hard to fix this green screen and it never quite looks right, but I'll keep working it. Um, so, sorry, HD Gamer is now saying if a plane has Wi-Fi doing a live stream, that would be the most hilarious thing ever to try and do live stream on a plane. Um you would probably just see like one, like three pixels of me, my head, live chat, and maybe vidIQ. And they would, they would just change colors. And that's all you'd be able to see from the live stream. 
So I don't think that would be a, a brilliant idea. Um, so anyway, I have to say, folks, I've absolutely loved this live stream, but I am exhausted. And I think after an hour and 15 minutes, I need to step away from the microphone, have something to eat. I really do appreciate you all joining this live stream. Uh, of course, as we're moving up to Christmas, for you to spend some time uh, with vidIQ. Very much appreciate it. Fantastic. I will take the hat off now because my head's getting a little warm. And yes, here, this, uh, this is like a bald head reveal as well, in case nobody's ever seen vidIQ before. I, uh, I am uh, follically challenged uh, up above. Uh, so there we are. So I can see a lot of people are now saying goodbye. And uh, I think I, I have earned myself a pizza here, don't you? I'm going to have a, a, a mini one from Pizza Hut and hope my girlfriend doesn't get too annoyed when she realizes what I've had for lunch. So thank you very much for watching this live stream. I've learned a lot from this. I hope you've learned something about how to um, use comments to build a community. And absolutely, I'm going to be doing a lot more live streams in the new year. Stay subscribed to the channel and make sure that we can help you get more views in less time, whether it's using the vidIQ tool or subscribing to the channel for free tips. We want to help you. Take care, everyone. And as I always say, enjoy the rest of your video making day. Bye for now.